Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Birdland here in New York City. In a very rare performance here tonight at Birdland, jazz vocalist Kevin Mahogany, along with his very dear friend Dave Stryker, are performing with the Dave Stryker Organ Trio tonight. And they have a brand new project which is being released on Kevin's record label, which they recorded a couple of years ago in Brazil. And what's really, really unique about this project is that both of these gentlemen put a very, very different twist to a lot of the contemporary blues as well as standard jazz vocal songs. Tonight here on the Pace Report, you're going to see them perform selections off the brand new CD. Sit down and talk with both of them about this project and also talk about Kevin's origins and beginnings in Kansas City on how he developed his vocal style late in the game as well as him carrying on the tradition of the baritone vocal style like Arthur Prysock as well as Billy Axtine. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Mr. Kevin Mahogany and the Dave Stryker Organ Trio live here at Birdland here in New York City. If you should plan to move to the west, travel my way, take the highway, that's the best. Congratulations, you have a brand new CD out with Dave Stryker and this record's a little different because you're putting some different twists to some blues and ballads. Well, a little bit, a little bit, not a big change, but we try to do something a little different with some of the tunes because people have heard them, you know. They're standard repertoire, so a lot of people sing them, so the best way to keep something new is by making it a little different, but hopefully it's not so different that people, you know, get turned off by it. You also recorded this album in Brazil. Yeah, that was a blast. We were down there for a major jazz festival, man, with, I mean, literally tens of thousands of people at this festival. It was great, but the atmosphere down there just turned out right, and the uh, young man that we had an opportunity to work with on drums had a studio, so we went in and knocked that out, and it turned out to be great. And also, this is on your own imprint, too. Yes, it's on Mahogany Jazz, and we've been, I mean, I've been doing my own thing for a little while, but we've been branching out doing some other, not only material, but other uh, artists on our label. So this one is a Dave Stryker production. He produced this one. So uh, in some ways, even though it's getting us back out there, in this sense, it's also getting him out there as a producer, you know, so it works out well for everybody. Tell me some of the songs that you cover on this CD. Well, on this one, we have a, actually, we have one original of mine called Kansas City Born and Bred, because I'm originally from Kansas City, so every once in a while I got to put that back out there, let people know that we still and we real, you know, and then we, but we've got some other stuff, we've got a few other blues, we've got some ballads, we uh, a tune like Secret Love, we turned into a ballad, it turned out beautiful, 
Uh, we also, um, I want to talk about you, a tune by the late, great Mr. Billy Eckstein. It, as a tune I fell in love with, and I told him I wanted to record it. I've done it once before, and I want to do it again. Uh, you know, some of the great artists, not saying I'm one of the great artists, but some of the great artists recorded tunes that they liked three and four times on different projects. And so this gave me another chance to do that, as well as, like, Teach Me Tonight, uh, Next Time You See Me, which is a blues, but it's also happened to be the title track of the album. So we got a variety of stuff on there that we've done a different number of different ways. Uh, again, hopefully it's a nice enough mixture to keep you interested from the beginning to end. Tall and tan and young and lovely The girl from Ipanema goes walking When she passes, each one she passes goes <sighs> When she walks, she like a sofa That swings so cool Yet sways so gently When she passes, each one she passes goes and you guys recorded this project in Brazil and what was it that you were going for in this project? Well we were in Brazil because I had a festival over there and I had been there the year before with my organ trio and this time I suggested we bring Kevin as a special guest and it worked out great they they loved him over there and the drummer had a studio and we went in the studio and Basically, we just decided to go in and, and just call tunes that Kevin wanted to do, a few that I wanted to do, just some straight-ahead stuff. Uh, just record the group, you know, get it down on tape. And uh, we got uh, some blues, some standards, and maybe one of Kevin's originals and some ballads and the stuff that I think Kevin does better than just about anybody, really. So I, I, I wanted to, as a producer, I wanted to showcase that side of him, you know, which is, you know, his instrument is 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 in a class by itself i feel what is it about kevin's voice that is just so in the vein of like an arthur prysock or the great billy Axstein? what is it about him that's bringing the contemporary side of what those vocalists did back in the day well we both came up in the at the same time in the 70s in fact we were just listening on the way over here to a bunch of 70s R&B stuff. It was I happened to be on BGO on Sunday nights, and we were just grooving the whole way here. Uh, but the thing is, Kevin is—it's uh, funny that his name is Mahogany, and that's really his name because you know, if you think about his voice, it's got that—that that, it sounds like wood. You know, it sounds woody. It sounds like rich. And I don't know how he got such a great instrument. Some, you know, I guess some singers are just born with a gift. You know, to have a, a naturalist instrument, and he really has that. Uh, you know, very unique, uh, special instrument.
Kansas City is where you were born and bred, and I understand now you didn't start off on vocals. You were pretty much a sax and clarinet and percussion guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I started off on a, I started off actually on clarinet and went to tenor saxophone, then switched to baritone, and uh, playing in the big band in Kansas City. Back when uh, big band still played on the weekends, when they still played in clubs, I was playing in the big band at, uh, at the age of 12, uh, working and, and, and I mean earning money, you know, and uh, playing the doubles, clarinet and flute for baritone sax. I'd play bass clarinet when needed. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I did. I did that for a number of years. Uh, I did that. That was like the career before this one, before I even started focusing on singing. I've been playing professionally. Now. I understand it was through maybe your junior, senior year in high school. That's when you kind of like had an epiphany and started going with vocal. Well, I started doing a few more things then. I was, I was blessed to be born in an area where it was ripe with vocalists. So there's so many wonderful singers that I had the opportunity to hear. And, and don't get me wrong, most of the people you wouldn't know by name because they're you know, from my home and community and they're more local. But it was a chance. The, the thing was, I, got, I learned by listening before I even got out there to do it the first time. So I could hear all these cats. And then once I got, as I was getting ready to graduate high school is when I started focusing a little bit more on singing some. And, but I didn't really change until I got to university. That's when I uh, was still playing instruments, playing in the band, in the orchestra, and the jazz ensemble, and pit orchestras, and pep bands, and, and doing all that. But I also started singing more, too, in the concert choirs, and other groups, and the gospel choir. And, and so it, it slowly started to change about then. And that's, uh, as I was started going through university, I started changing my focus from uh, uh, instrumental to vocal. And you also started a jazz choir in college also. Yeah, I started, well, in my school, it was a small university. They didn't have anything like that. And, you know, that at that time, jazz choirs were very more popular uh, than they are now even. And uh, it was one of those concepts I thought we should do, and they let me do it. And it was a lot of fun for me and a great experience, a learning experience also. One of your favorite singers is also one of my favorite vocalists. In fact, I've interviewed and profiled him here on the Pace Report, Mr. Al Jarreau. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Al was probably one of my earliest influences when I decided to start singing jazz. I was singing other styles, but when I wanted to do jazz, I was wondering why all music wasn't like Al Jarreau's music, because his stuff was just so extremely hip. Great lyrics, great music, and I'm like, that should be the popular music there because that is, I mean, it has everything you want. And so that's kind of um, when I started really listening to jazz. And then, like most jazz people, you study backwards when you find someone like Al Jarreau. So from Al Jarreau, I found John Hendrix. And from John Hendrix, I found Eddie Jefferson and Leo Watson and all the other greats, you know, before then. Uh, I mean, so. Uh, that's kind of how I fell into jazz, you know, like everybody else who does jazz, it almost goes backwards, and then before you go forward. Yeah. Thank you. 
You know, Al Jarreau did something that I think that's very instrumental in your career is that Al not only sang jazz, but he sang R&B and he sang pop and he sang top 40 commercial music. And you throughout your career have really straddled the lines as far as genres and also interpreting different genres of music into jazz or soul or blues. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that uh, because at one time someone made a comment about my singing that it sounded like it was, you know, well, it's, I can tell that's him because it's got that little R&B thing. And I was like, well, yeah, because that's what I grew up on, you know. I mean, when you grow up with that, you can't avoid those influences in your life. You know, if I grew up in the 40s, it, I'd sound different. But I grew up when Motown was strong and... Uh, Tamla and Stax Records and the sound of Philadelphia. That's what I grew up on. So when people always, always ask me about my earliest jazz influence, I say those were it. The Motown was it. You got to remember Motown, their band, their regular band were jazz players first, man. So to say I grew up, you know, I can't tell you. Well, I mean, I love Bird. Don't get me wrong. Bird is from my home, you know, and I love Bird. And Bird is a big influence on me, but. I can't say he's any more of an influence than, you know, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles and Gladys Knight and Diana Ross and the Supremes and uh, the Temptations, the Four Tops, the Spinners, the Delphonics, the Temprees, the Temptations. And you, know, you know, the list goes on because that's what I do and that's what I know. So um, all of those influences, all of those influence your music. You can't avoid it. It's there. to do it again for another edition of the Pace Report reporting live here at Birdland here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Kevin Mahogany as well as Dave Stryker and the organ trio for their time as well as the staff and management here at Birdland. As always please visit my website www.thepacereport.com for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time remember if it's in the groove it'll make you move. Until next time peace. Okay.